What's going on guys, Matt Sheldon here from Become Elite. And today in this video, I wanna talk about why certain players should actually stop doing the John Terry cardio workout. I know this probably sounds very, very strange coming from me, but please sit back, hit the thumbs up button and give me a chance to explain. So a little background information for you guys. If you guys have never heard of the John Terry Cardio Workout, it's actually a treadmill based workout posted by John Terry on his Instagram page that was created by one of his trainers. I found it, I tried it, I loved it, and since then has become an absolute staple in my off season workouts. If you guys wanna see the full video about that workout, check out the description box. I'll put the link at the very top. So check out that video if you've never heard of the John Terry Cardio Workout. Over the last year or two, this workout's gotten a lot of attention in the soccer community, and I've seen hundreds if not thousands of people test out their fitness levels by doing this cardio workout and sending me the results. But lately I've had a few conversations with a few players where after hearing their situation, I've actually advised them to stop doing the John Terry cardio workout or at least tone it down and maintain their current fitness level. But why? Why did I tell them that they should stop? And when are you gonna reach that point where you should stop? Well, honestly, it really just boils down to working smarter. These players that I've talked to are absolutely crushing this workout. The normal John Terry cardio workout involves 15 sets of interval sprints. However, these players are pushing up into the 20, 25 plus set range and are expressing to me that they have the goal of even pushing higher into the 30s. And on one hand, I think it's absolutely amazing to see these players really pushing themselves and striving to test their physical limits to see how far they really can take this workout. Personally, I really think that mentality is great and I think it's gonna benefit their careers in the long term. However, my advice to them was actually to not progress and to stop doing the John Terry cardio workout for at least now. And I said this because these players that are getting 25 plus sets and wanting to progress even further have pretty much already achieved a professional level of fitness for this style of workout. But none of these players that I talked to were professional footballers. So if they could beat me, if they could beat John Terry, and if they could beat countless other pros who have tried this workout, why are they not pro? And the answer really varied from player to player. For some, it was their technical ability. For others, it felt like their speed of play was too slow. Some felt that it was their strength. But time and time again, after I talked to these players, none of them said that it was their physical fitness levels that was holding them back to becoming a pro. So my advice to them was to really maintain their current fitness level and to stop doing the John Terry cardio workout or at least tone it down, not progress in that workout, and instead spend all that time and energy that would have gone into that workout and focus it, channel it into other areas of their game that they feel like need to be improved in order to reach the next level. To continue to work just as hard, but to shift the focus towards their weaknesses where they're gonna see the biggest benefit from their work. Quick note, although I say weaknesses, I'm really referring to the areas of your game that are holding you back from reaching the next level. This is important to note because if you're a center back, then your weaknesses will probably be 1v1 dribbling, shooting, etc. But those are probably not the weak areas of your game that are holding you back from playing at the next level at the center back position. Analyze your game as a center back and ask yourself what area is holding me back as a center back. For example, if it's your distribution, then that's the weakness I'm referring to and that's the area of your game you should shift your focus to and work on. It's the same exact reason why I don't do any additional fitness work while I'm in season. My fitness right now is probably one of my greatest greatest strengths as a player. What's holding me back from having the season I want and progressing my career even further is not my fitness. Personally, I really think it's my ability to build out of the back consistently and effectively to create chances and to really get a lot of assists and maybe even some goals this season. So during season when we're playing games, have tons of trainings almost every single day, I focus the little extra effort and energy that I have into improving those areas, improving my weaknesses that I really feel like need to be improved in order for me to progress. This whole mentality really boils down to the 80-20 rule. And this rule, this principle, the 80-20 principle is that 80% of your results come from just 20% of your work. So in order to maximize the benefit that you're gonna get from your training, you should really focus majority of your effort, that 80% of your effort, and the small part of your game, the 20% of your game, that's really gonna give you the best bang for your buck. And as a player, this can be very difficult. It can be very difficult to take a step back, self-analyze your game, and then to put the time and effort into improving the areas that aren't very good, your weaknesses. Because if your long balls are absolutely terrible, it's not fun to go out to the field and work on your long balls. It's gonna be frustrating, you're gonna mess up a lot, and it's not gonna be as enjoyable as doing something that you're already really good at. And to be honest, this is something that I've even struggled with in the past. If you guys look back at my 2016 off-season series, you can really see that I was obsessed with testing my physical limits in the gym. I was obsessed with getting bigger, stronger, and faster. But my athleticism, my strength, were major strengths of my game. And what was holding me back at that time was not how strong I was in the gym or how fast I was. It was my technical ability, my tactical ability, 
ability, and in particular, my crossing ability. And I mean, to my credit, yes, I still spent hours and hours outside every single week working on those areas, but I'm just wondering maybe if I spent just an hour less in the gym per week or two hours less in the gym and shifted that time and energy to being out on the field, how much more that would have benefited my game. Did I really need to improve my squat from a 315 pound max to a 340 pound max? Probably not. And yes, I do think it's important to work on your strengths, to work on that area of your game that really is your X factor, so to say. But I've seen it time and time again. The reason why many players don't progress up to the next levels is because there's certain areas of their game that are really holding them back, that aren't at the professional level, which can be very off-putting to coaches that look at them and say, look, he's pretty much a professional level player, but his 1v1 defending just isn't there. And I can't trust him on the field in the professional environment if he can't defend 1v1. And again, I think this mentality of continuing to push yourself and test your limits is a great mentality to have. And I think my obsessiveness with progress and improving one area of my game over and over again as far as I possibly can is a huge reason why I'm a pro footballer today. But I also think that you should always be asking yourself, what area is holding me back from reaching my goals? What areas of my game are already at the next level or already at the professional level? Where should I shift the majority of my focus to get the maximum benefit? What areas of my game are starting to give me diminishing returns for the effort that I put in? And how should I adjust my training so that I can work as smart as possible? So to sum up, my advice to these players that are pushing 25 plus sets of the John Terry cardio workout is to shift the focus from their strengths of physical fitness to the areas of their game that are really holding them back so they can better achieve and more quickly achieve reaching the next level. So anyway, guys, that's the video. I hope you guys liked it. If you did, if you got some value from it, please, please, please hit the thumbs up button. Consider subscribing for more videos just like this. And I'll see you guys in the next video. All right, guys, peace. Thank you.